What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One. And today we're going to find out what the difference between pancake lovers and waffle lovers are in another episode of For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. first. And if you haven't clicked away yet because you realize that that's not the answer that you want it to be answered, uh, this question comes from Fox the Beast. Yes. I think, yes. If you could design a 40k TV show for Warhammer Plus, what kind of TV show would you make? So what is Warhammer uh, uh, Warhammer Plus missing? Yeah. Um, yeah. So as of right now, they don't have very much when it comes to animation. Uh, they have the 2D, like almost Castlevania. I hate to say it, but it looks like Castlevania in stills, but it's not there in animation. Uh, but that's supposed to give you little snippets of lore and information about the grander world of 40k. Sometimes they talk about orcs, sometimes they talk about the Inquisition. Um, so that just gives you a little bit into the life and um, events transpiring throughout the whole world. Besides that, they also have um, the was it Angels of Death, which is made by Richard Boylan, the guy who did Hell's Reach, and it's like a grim dark uh, battle between the Blood Angels and the Tyranids. Um, we're all still waiting for a Stardies. Yes, we are. <laughs> um, if I were to create my own, like I think something that um, they're missing um, is is something that is more like vloggy um, in the realm of like the Warhammer designers and stuff like that. So not just like the podcasts um, that they put out on YouTube um, or like their yeah their podcast yeah that's what they do when they talk about what's coming in the future of 40k but if, if there was like a way that uh, maybe like one or two uh, hosts <laughs> uh, could uh, walk around like the Warhammer um, studio or whatever it's called um, and make it feel kind of like the old school G4 where like mm. it's all about video games but like like they would um, you know they had knowledge of, of video games and they were like reviewing the different things that are coming out so if, if that was a thing um and it was a daily like yeah thing uh that would be really nice yeah we'd With have more our, production yeah value. we'd have our own like x play yeah exactly <laughs> something like that mm -hmm. uh, with more production value because uh, there's some awesome um youtube uh personalities that that do something similar mm -hmm. um like what's his name kirioth or kirioth kirioth Something like that. Yeah. Uh, but he kind of just sits and talks. Mm -hmm. um, if it was more, like I said, more like... Movement. Yeah, more like <laughs> a Miniac Mini, but in 40K and like really just informative mm -hmm. style. Um, anyway. Yeah, because they do have like a lore master thing. They do have a battle report thing, a uh, painter thing. Um, but I heard that's not good. Yeah. Um, we're just waiting for a starty too, yeah. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Um, besides that, I think another thing that they're missing is the children audience. Have a Pe Peppa Pig style TV show yes. about a, like a little Gretchen getting into wacky adventures and having like a little nurgling that is a thorn on his side and he's got to overcome like getting lost in space or getting transported into a Fenrisian world and now there's an ice troll trying to eat him. And he yeah. befriends, you know, the, the wilderness beasts. And that kind of reminds me of what, like, uh, Mini Wargamer Dave did a long, long time ago. Like, he came out with, like, a Wargamer's, like, children's oh, book. Oh, that, that, yeah, he did do that. With the purpose of getting the, the children into 40K. Mm -hmm. And I think so, like, if they did something like that... Um, because in our demographic, like, the people that watch these videos, they're at that age where we have kids now. Um, so, like, if we could introduce our kids into 40K through this little Gretchen and, and or, you know, a show like that, it would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, so somehow incorporate, like, the Gretchen maybe rolling dice <laughs> <laughs> or doing something like that. I don't know why, but I thought of the Gretchen, like, behind, like, a grocery store rolling dice. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, maybe that little Gretchen movie show will get the same amount of hate. As Warhammer Adventures does. I think the problem with Warhammer Adventures, though, is, like, the message behind it wasn't clear. And, like, people didn't get that. Hey, this is so that GW can generate 
a new audience mm-hmm. uh, or so what, what basically mini wargamer dave did so well and, and just straight up say like hey this is what our kids could get into um tabletop games right um just say that gw like mm-hmm. that's why you should just hire us yeah i think they messed up by like showing oh this is a necron and it's smiling and it's hanging out with the crew that's not a necron yeah <laughs> necrons don't smile they don't hang with the crew they deatomize you yes mm-hmm. um but yeah i think if they were just more I guess that's transparency, right? That's, I guess that's so. the whole thing. Um, but they're learning. They're learning, I guess. Yeah, give them time, or not. <laughs> Most of you haven't. Most right. of you guys just have moved on to different games. Yeah. Now we won't know exactly how you guys hate GW because they took out the dislike button. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, no, it's still there. It's check it. That's dislike. See, it's still there. But look, it doesn't tell you how many. Oh shit! I just disliked our own. <laughs> um. Next question comes from Brian B. Is a good Warhammer 40k MMO possible? What's MMO? Uh, mul- multiple, uh, like like uh, think of um, Elder Scrolls. Oh or, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If they could do it for um, Knights Star of the Wars. Republic. Yeah, if they could yeah. do it for Star Wars. They could do it for Warhammer. Yeah, the, the world is there. They just have to implement it correctly. I would say. Do not let everybody be Jedi. So don't let everybody <laughs> let be, be Space Marines. Marine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, like, play around with, like, the other races. Maybe make it, like, um, I don't know. Would you like it to be a lottery of, like, when you when you start the game, it's a lottery of what race? That's what are. I was thinking. But just like anything that has done a lottery, they just make a new account until they get what they want. That's true, I guess. <laughs> like, the, the cool thing about, like, World of Warcraft and games like that is you do see a big audience for everything. Yeah. You have, like, your orc players and you're, like, I don't know, coalition or whatever they're called, the humans. Yeah. Um, but I think with 40K, yeah, everybody's going to want to be a space marine for the most part, just like the actual game. 80% of the people you play with have is a space marine army. That's true. Yeah, I guess you can't really escape that because mm-hmm. nobody's going to want to be an Eldar. I wouldn't want to be an Eldar. If I got a random pool and I got, or I got a random generated Eldar, even if it's a dark Eldar player, like, who plays Dark Elf? <laughs> right. Edge Lords, <laughs> docile creatures. <Yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's possible. It is. It's just GW has been so. They've been missing more than they've hit home runs when it comes to their video games, which is a good thing. I think let, we need to stop and realize that we're getting mad at the animation. We're getting mad at like the comic books and the way they're treating kids. Like they're a tabletop game that has gotten so popular that like it's venturing off its other spaces. Mm-hmm. It's doing good. Yeah. And but, yeah, it's funny because this guy asked us a question on another video. It wasn't a greater wall, but he said, why is it that there is no Warhammer 40k video game where it's like you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh, you could play your card game or get on a console and actually play the card game Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Same thing with like Magic. Um, and I think it's just that GW is too, too protective with their IP. And they'll think like, oh, if you could just play 40k on a console, a PC... Um, on your phone, that's going to take away from the sales for the actual tabletop. Which it would. It would, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, yeah. $60 for a game as opposed to not, like, you could only get a codex for that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're definitely making more money on the actual physical tabletop than they would on a game. Right. But, of course, you could still put, like, microtransactions, updates, um, different types of... Uh, Cryptos. <laughs> you could, yeah. So... I don't know. I, I don't see that happening as much as I would want it to be a thing. Right. Um, Justice777. Yeah. Seven, seven, seven. What kind of squig would you guys keep for a house pet? At first I thought like a hair squig because it seems very docile. <laughs> uh, you could just like put it on something and it will bite down. If you could leave it alone. It's supposed to hold on to, to the actual head of the, the orc. Mm-hmm. But then I remember that... Orc physiology is way tougher than humans, so like if I were to use that uh, on me, it would probably like rip my skin off. <laughs> um, so maybe that's not the best use of a squig. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, I'm either, my mind's going to a squigasaur or a hair squig. Squigasaur is just asking for me to die. <laughs> And I think that's the problem with squigs. At at their core, they're all really deadly. Yeah, uh, they're they're all just gonna kill you. 
And that's like keeping like poisonous lizards and snakes and frogs as a pets. Like eventually there's going to be an accident. Yeah. The anaconda is going to wrap itself around you and twerk. Mm hmm. And we all know anacondas don't want none unless you got buns, hon. Which, based on our de- demographic, you guys probably don't have buns. Uh, <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you have buns. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a nice set of of, of pancakes? Uh, we didn't even talk about pancakes in that. Oh, one. that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, what is better, pancakes or waffles? I would say waffles because they don't get as soggy as quickly as pancakes do. Yeah, but then they also get a little too crunchy. See, I'm okay with crunchy waffles. I guess it depends on the day. Um, yeah. Yeah, it does depend. Uh, next question comes from Eroch9. Could the lost Primarchs be forgotten but not gone? I was looking through a list of... The- Ooh, <laughs> oh, you tricked me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was looking through a list of the Emperor's ridiculous list of Psyker powers and found an ability that not only makes the enemy forget your existence but stop them from forming new ones. Uh, one or both Primarchs could be in a galaxy still fighting. One could even show up and save Gilliman only to be forgotten a moment later. Could the Big E or Malkador have condemned their sons to being living ghosts? The X-Men have a member with this mixed blessing, forget-me-not. He saves his teammates a dozen times only to be forgotten almost immediately. That's actually really badass. Yeah, sounds like all my uh, past romances. (laughs) Um, it would be nice if, like, they tied it somehow to the Legion of the Damned, Mm -hmm. uh, where, like, people think they credit the Legion of the Damned, but it's actually just this Primarch and his chapter. Yeah. uh, Which is why they can be in two places at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a cool story. Right. But we'd never know because we'd forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. If you do a homebrew thing on that, that's awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. I like the concept. It's pretty cool and fun. They should implement it more, but maybe the concept would just be too kind of out there. Because um, I feel like the more outlandish you get with your abilities and stuff like that, the harder it is to like make it make sense and write it in and stuff like that. Kind of with like Space Marines eating things and spitting acid. It's really cool, but you hardly ever hear about it. That's true. Yep. Uh, Greg A. Johnson, 1985, says, Why are you guys so awesome and so handsome? Uh, because we're Hispanic, and according to um, our demographic and just certain UK TikToks, Hispanic people aren't common over there. <laughs> yeah. And um, usually, what is it? What's the word? Diversity? Synchronicity? Uh, oh, oddities? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> And or what, what are you trying I'm to trying to say, like, if something's not common, it seems like a delicacy or something like that. Oh, know. yeah, yeah. I don't know what the word for it is, but yeah, yeah I get you. There's a word like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if a really skinny, tall, blonde chick shows up, like, it's like, whoa. But, like, I'm pretty sure if you go to Poland, that's everybody. That's everybody, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. The next question comes from Ally Parada. Are you guys the most fit slash swole 40k YouTubers? If I am, that's sad. (laughs) (laughs) Let me think, let me think. I know there's a guy on Instagram that used to, um, or that still, I think, plays Imperial Fist. I don't remember his name, and it's going to take me forever to go go through the list of our people we follow. Oh, dang, we're we're not. Henry Cavill. (laughs) I think that's... I, like, I don't know. I don't. I think he's just playing us. So here's the thing. Just yesterday, I saw an article saying that Henry Cavill played Warhammer 40K with Tom Holland. Who's Tom Holland? He's a Spider-Man dude. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's like, is this real or is this just like... I don't know. I think it, it, it feels like a ploy. Like, mm-hmm. it feels like a, look yeah. at us. Yeah, like, who's two hot celebrities that are, like, popping right now? Well, there's a new Spider-Man movie coming out, and The Witcher's coming out soon. Well, let's say they play 40K. Yeah, because they do it with, like, Dungeons & Dragons, too. Yeah, bring in uh, Terry Crews and Joe Manganiello. <laughs> yeah, when they they're about to do something. Yeah. But, so. I mean, Hot Ones does that all the time. They do? Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, this guy's got a movie coming up. Oh. Plug this, plug that. Oh, yeah, yeah. For mm-hmm. sure, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Maybe, so, he's he's swoller than us, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Just barely, though. Like, Only, like, a couple couple uh, 
inches around the bicep. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. Uh, this one is by <clears throat> Richest Man in Tatooine. What is your pile of shame? Uh, right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like talking about my pile of shame because I think it's it's ridiculous the more I talk about it. Mm -hmm. so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a video planned um, coming in the few, next few weeks to show you what I've got done in 2020, uh, you know, like wargaming wise. So 2021. I'll show in 2021, there you go. See, I don't even know what year it is. Um, um, but yeah, stay subbed. Uh, probably should come out next week or so. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Bonds Blanc. Conocen de algún algún buena canal sobre 40k en español? Uh, you guys are the best bilingual Warhammer channel. Greetings from Argentina. Ay. I don't think they say I. I say they, they they say che. They do, yeah. Um, vos? They probably say vos, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, I don't actually know any good Spanish-speaking YouTube 40Kers. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you guys do comment down in the comment section below. Again, I I think I'm on Instagram a lot, and I know there's a lot of really good Instagram uh, painters. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they transfer over to um, YouTube, like showing you how to paint certain minis and stuff, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question. Uh, this guy says, I work out, or Kay Garcia says, I work out listening to the greater wah most times. Sometimes I hold on the weekend videos to listen to them while working out on Monday. It's fun to either do some cardio or do tricep work and laugh out loud when you guys crack out hilarious responses. Stay strong, dudes. The show has kept me on good spirits through the pandemic. Oh, that's awesome, man. It's really good to hear. Yeah. And then uh, Adeptus Astarte says, so you only work out for 20 minutes three times a week? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not going to do anything, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Like you said, pile them up and then work out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three hours of cardio is a lot. That is. Yeah. That's too much, man. Or my, who, who, I mean, then again, I, I am overweight, so. <laughs> More power to you. You're probably not overweight. Uh, uh, let me look at the profile picture. Oh, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> this next question comes from Fox the Beast. Do you guys like the All Guardsmen Party? Why or why not? What's that mean? Yeah, I've never heard of that. <laughs> All Guardsmen Party. It's giving me like swinger vibes. Yeah, then you're scaring me. I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, Adeptus Astarte says, if Mexican Space Marines existed, would you, would they wear sombreros? Also, would their chapter badge be a chihuahua? Um, it depends on their homeworld. If it had, like, a very harsh sun, then maybe the sombreros would be needed. But yeah. if they're in their armor, um, that should cover up, you know. With the, their helmet. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually a, a good point, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure, like, a Mexican, um, Space Marine Army would, could also be an Aztec Space Marine mm -hmm. Army, a Mayan Space Marine, uh, Army, mm -hmm. um, or even, like, a like, charros, yeah. um, not churros, not churros, no, um, but yeah, maybe, mm -hmm. and I think that as far as p chapter badge, it would be a pain to paint, but just the eagle, mm -hmm. <laughs> the eagle killing the snake. Yeah, if you guys want to see some cool, like, aesthetically pleasing and artistic shots and stuff on netflix uh the same guy that did um oh i'm blanking out robert rodriguez is that his name i think so um but he did like uh, a show called maya and the three and it's animated and it shows a lot of like mayan uh type aesthetics and like they fight against like the undead and gods and stuff like that so there's some pretty cool shots maybe use some of them to help you uh, getting like ideas and stuff for how a actual Mexican type of uh, Space Marine army could look like. Yeah. With like jaguars and stuff like that. Right. Calaveras. Calaveras. Uh, and then sticking with the um, Mexican theme, Don Krill says, Do you think original European Spanish is talked very fast? Uh, Gabriel Iglesias says, Mexicans sound high when they speak Spanish. So, what's your opinion? Un abrazo, muchachos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Taking it up a notch. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, Don Grill. Um, no, I don't think that they speak too fast. I think they have like a certain flow that's different than uh, Mexican Spanish. Mm -hmm. But you also have to remember that Mexican Spanish is very diverse. So, like, the northerners 
uh, talk very different than like Southerners, um, and then you have every everything in between. Yeah, different dialects. The interesting thing about us is we did not grow up in Mexico. We grew up in Chicago. So like here, the diversity of not only Mexicans but just like all Hispanic people is is like tremendous. So mm -hmm. like we have Puerto Rican friends, we have um, um, Central American friends, and they uh, the Spanish kind of like mix to like. Uh, I wouldn't say we're no sabo kids, but like there's a certain dialect um, that that um, we speak, or not even a dialect. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a slang, but not really. Yeah, like Spanglish, but with also with its own little flow. Yeah, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's the same thing. And like somebody who lives in with or like has that background of Catalan is going to speak different than the people that don't right. in Spain and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, and I actually saw. Uh, Mr. Iglesias live years ago before it like blew up and got super famous. He doesn't look real. He doesn't look real. <laughs> no, what do you like, mean? Like I like I was maybe ten feet away from him and he was telling his stand up and the dude was sweating and huffing and puffing and trying to breathe while telling his stand up and it just didn't seem real. Like he could just be standing there and I was just cracking up. Like I can't believe like like he's not a human. Like he's a gene stealer cult. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe it's different now. Maybe the fame has made him like, apotheosis into, you know, something else, something beyond. I've always been disappointed with his interviews in, like, Hot Ones and, um, was he in the Joe Rogan podcast? Uh, he might have been. I feel like I, they always, like, he's, he's good. He's not good in those, I guess. He, I feel like, yeah, his stories are grander than who he actually, like, he's just a regular dude and it's like, no, tell me the story. Like, yeah. I want that. <laughs> Stop. Stop yeah. being normal. <laughs> right. I want the cult. Kind of like if you guys saw us in real life. You guys probably just ask us if we're gay. Mm -hmm. And we'd be like, dude, my mom's here to pick me up. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And those are the questions for today. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk next week. Yeah. That's it. Um, keep them coming and we'll gargle next time. Gersh one. Sound Alchemist. Out. <laughs> Oh, it is to put my freedom first in any situation.